Raphael, we don't know whether the universe is finite or infinite. But when we talk about even the possibility of an infinite universe, our minds seem to lock. What does it mean? What would it mean if the universe is infinite? There are different ways that the universe could be infinite. One way it could be infinite is if it was infinite to start with. If for some reason it was created already as infinite space, uh, it might sound surprising, but then it could still be expanding anyway. <laughs> Uh, and that is certainly a model that, that, that fits the data reasonably well. Um, but there are a number of reasons that we believe now that even if the universe was spatially finite, it does become infinite over time. Mm. Uh, that ex the expansion of the universe is actually eternal, at least on the largest scales, and never completely comes to a halt everywhere. Uh, the reason that we believe this, for one, uh, is that our own universe uh, the part that we see uh, has started accelerating its expansion a few billion years ago. Uh, it used to sort of step on the, on the brake, mm -hmm. and, and seven billion years ago, it, it started moving over to the gas pedal. And that came as a huge surprise uh, when it was discovered about 13 years ago. Uh, and, and it is uh, ascribed most simply to something called the cosmological constant, or the energy of empty space, or dark energy. And what this dark energy does is it causes the universe to inflate exponentially fast. In other words, every certain amount of time, it doubles in size. And what that means, in turn, is that even if uh, the universe has some sort of instability built into it that locally will cause it to end. So if you and I sit around long enough in this room, maybe one day we'll fall into a black hole and, and our, our personal life will end and, and, and the matter around us will end. Um, or there are other kinds of, of decays that can happen, uh, which will lead to crunches, to, to, to places where space and time just come to an end. Even if those things happen at a certain rate, because of the self-reproduction of this exponential expansion, there's always enough space around uh, that hasn't been eaten up yet by such decays. And so the universe is going to keep going. And this mechanism is actually very important. It's called eternal inflation, and it arises very naturally uh, Again, just if you have one vacuum, like ours apparently is, with, with positive weight of empty space, with positive cosmological constant, or in the landscape of string theory, where you have perhaps 10 to the 500 such types of empty space, such vacua. In that case, you get into a very interesting and, and perplexing uh, situation. Because what happens is that by the sheer size of the, of the universe that you generate, Everything that can happen in that universe will happen over and over and over again in different, enormously separated regions. I mean, don't expect to find another, another copy of us talking in the room next door. But if you go, not just billions of light years, but exponentially more than that, far away from here, uh, perhaps there's another you and me do, having exactly the same conversation right now. Um, now, why is that perplexing other than that it, well, it sort of blows your mind, but why is it perplexing to a physicist who should be used to, you know, nature doing weird things that we just have to come around to? Um, it's perplexing to us because it tells us that we don't really know how to compute probabilities for anything. Because everything is infinite. Because everything is infinite. There are infinitely many yous who win the lottery in their lifetime, even though that is supposed to be quite unlikely, and we think we know that that's unlikely how to compute that. But if you look at the universe as a whole in this picture, there are infinitely many of you who win the lottery, infinitely many who don't. So who's to say that winning the lottery is unlikely? Now, with winning the lottery, we, we, we can go by our intuition. We think we know how to compute that, that probability. But once you start asking questions about what we should see in cosmology, when we look out into the sky, you start realizing that you really are getting your, your whole method of computing probabilities for anything undermined by these infinities. And, and that, that's really the core of science. If we can't compute what should happen, if we can't say that this is likely and this is unlikely, how could we ever rule out a theory and say that it's wrong because it says that what happens all the time is unlikely? So how do we get to a solution? Well, the way that we have tried to deal with the infinities that the multiverse leads us into and not just the multiverse, but again, fairly uh, uh, pedestrian situations like the very universe we see around us seems to lead to this situation, um, is to somehow 
find rules for considering only a portion of this infinite universe and ignoring the rest, that portion being finite, so that we can count how many times you win the lottery and how many mm -hmm. times you don't, and then we can say the ratio of those two numbers is, mm -hmm. is, is the probability for uh, winning the lottery. Um, so we want to end up with a finite region where we can compute the probabilities in the way that we're used to and throw away an infinite region. And uh, the way that people have tried to go about this, uh, almost exclusively, is to come up with some sort of geometric rules. Uh, to us, the universe is geometry. It's the geometry of space-time. It's a curved geometry. Uh, and just as if you had an infinite piece of paper, you could take a pair of scissors and cut out you mm -hmm. know, a, a finite-sized disk like this uh, and then keep that and ignore the rest, we, we, we try to come up with rules for cutting that are in some way well-motivated, simple, uh, completely well-defined, and predictive. Um, so at that point, you're kind of doing the same thing that we do all the time in physics. We try to come up with simple rules, with simple theories that we then get predictions out of, they test those predictions, uh, and if they don't work, then we move on. Uh, now, this problem is called the measure problem, and these various theories that we came up, came up with are called measure proposals. The way that all of the most successful measure proposals work that we have so far is to end the universe at a certain time. The piece, the finite piece that you keep is what happened prior to that time, and the infinite piece that you throw away is what happened afterwards. And it works really well. The predictions are good, but there's one prediction which is really crazy sounding. And you can see immediately what that prediction is. We are computing probabilities at the end of the day in a universe that just ends at a certain time, and the probabilities reflect that. So the probabilities in particular tell you that there is a certain probability per unit time for the world to end. Mm -hmm. Now, that probability is not very high in the successful proposals that we have. It, it, you know, the chances are the universe is going to last for another several billion years before it ends. Uh, but just conceptually, it's a very puzzling prediction. And what do you mean by end? That the universe really behaves as if all of a sudden it stopped. Like, you, you reach a certain time, and it doesn't go on. Like, everything just disappears. Now, you're right in being puzzled. This runs completely counter to our intuition as physicists. All that we showed was that you can't have it both. You can't have these successful proposals that we've been working with for several years and not face up to this bizarre prediction that they make. It's a prediction that doesn't conflict with experiment, and so we should consider the possibility that it's actually correct. But in that case, we would probably like to understand at a more fundamental level uh, what the mechanism is behind this end of time. And when you talk about an end of time, do you mean it just for our universe, or do you mean it for the entire multiverse if such exists? It depends on how you think about the multiverse, mm -hmm. whether you should think of this as an end of time for just us or for the whole multiverse. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not a question that is very well defined, because we can only see uh, a finite piece of the universe. And there are regions which are so far away that you wouldn't be able to tell whether time ended there or not. So it wouldn't matter? What matters is that for us, you and me or anybody else, there is a finite probability that within the next several billion years, um, the universe is going to come to an end right here.